In this edition of The Advocate, I want to explore a very sensitive terrain, more like a soul searching, if you like. I did ask Rabbi many moons ago, why do people fight for God? And that brings me to my topic, doctrinal conflict, fighting for God and owning him. Protangoras once said, man is the measure of all things. I feel this expression best sets the tune for this discourse. Man amongst all of God's creatures is presumed to be gifted with high levels of intelligence. So he yearns to connect to his maker, God, with the aforementioned biospiritual component to assuage his fears, renew his thoughts, fellowship with a supersensible, and address his material needs. In a bid to find favor with God through diverse religious platforms, People, and Nigerians in particular, from all social strata, have developed doctrinal belief systems, some inspired by their religious rites, and others by their revered clergymen or women for whom they tacitly rely on for spiritual knowledge and growth. This is not bad, if you ask me. What is bad here, therefore, is that no sooner had a Nigerian settled for a religion, indigenous or imported or traditional, than he began to see others as wrongful, wasteful, subhuman, baseless, and worthless. You hear him call others unbelievers and infidels with venomic intolerance. At this stage, his nuisance value is contained since, well, his temperamental disorder as distorted by religious intolerance has not broken into physical violence or combative hostilities just yet. But the seed of his conviction soon grows into a full fanatical monster to the point where he assumed he is choosing of God to exterminate unbelievers or infidels, if you like. He quickly searches his religious books for verses that justify his actions. Then he begins to fight for God by killing his fellow men, having found some unguarded theological lines, which were believed to have been written by some prophets addressing all uh, together a different society or environment at a time in human history, in ancient time, at a time when there were no laws and the sum total of human experience were conquest induced such that people kill to conquer territories. Some religious disorderly minded entities in 2020 reach that and take up arms to kill and destroy others rather than rely on their intuitive resonance and inner faculties with tranquilities to find God for them severe thoughtful engagement and meditations on the supersensible. They barrage one another with their purported superior doctrinal idiosyncrasy. Isn't it ironic that you went to search for God but only came back dangerous and damaged? It is like taking a poisonous leaf to a purification feast. We fight for God and convict people for blasphemy, excommunicate them, suspend, and sometimes stone them to death, like the Pharisees did according to the laws of Moses in ancient Israel, where the canons were unjust and unreasonable. We label people stupid just on the basis of their faith. We smear and discriminate in Nigeria on the grounds of religion, as if we are not beaten enough by tribalism. Now, hear this. There are places you can't find a job in Nigeria, not because you are not qualified or that there are no vacancies, but because your surname does not sound like it. 
we unwittingly set these standards. Yet, we talk about one Nigeria, but our dispositions are rooted in division on the basis of religious belief. We do not understand. Too bad. In all this, God has never and will never command anyone to kill or fight for him across religious lines the world over. Check through your religious books and change your approach. I would therefore advocate that we embrace love as this is the greatest commandment of all times. You cannot claim to love God and hate anyone. You are wrong. Vengeance is the Lord, not yours. I shall go to Rabbi again. <laughs> uh, I just want to add quickly that if, if religion was a currency, Africa should have been the wealthiest nation on earth. In the world. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on. So Spot on. true. Spot on. So we, true. we are so religious and yet so backwards. The people that brought this religion to us suddenly are doing a lot better than us. They don't practice the religion the mm -hmm. way we have yes. so imbibed it. And it, this is not unconnected with the level of poverty. When there's absence of good leadership, these are the kind of things that you see. You know, you people have to believe in something. They, they yes. look for something to hang on to. Yeah. And that is what we're seeing. And it's so sad because uh, earlier on, I was sharing with you that, you know, now we're seeing uh, industries being replaced with worship centers. And the alarm the bells are not... replaced with industry. industries. Industries, yeah. rather, you know. And they should send alarm bells. Yeah. There's a big problem. We need to really ask ourselves deep questions. But this is not unconnected with bad leadership, lack of education, and all of the things we've been advocating today. I mean, these are false lines. Ethnicity, tribalism, um, or rather tribalism and religion in Nigeria. Those are false lines. So what our politicians do is to buy into that to further divide us. And we're not even smarter. We're looking at, okay, this is your religion, this is my religion. I'm not supposed to relate with you because, I mean, we're not supposed to be friends. Uh, if I can't win you over, then you're not my friend. Win me over for what? To what? Why don't we, just as Evan said, practice love? Because love conquers all. If you have love for somebody, you will not stay along Lagos about your ex-wife and be kidnapping people, for instance. You will not say, no, this is education, this is Western foul. education going far. You won't use your car to block the road yes. because you are going to worship your God while I am traveling for other assignments. You know, because the most annoying part of it is that you are traveling on one of those, either first Friday or last Friday, and then some people who went to worship their God are depriving others who are going to worship their own God or do some other things from going to where they are going because, oh, you have to, you went for whatever they call it. And it's the two religions I'm, now, I'm, along I'm, I'm Lagos telling you, the I'm, I'm telling you all, all the fact that I tell some people in my church, look, you are going to church, you are block somebody's road, you block somebody's gates, because you are running to go and serve God. Forgetting that you are inconveniencing somebody, you put your loudspeaker outside, you're disturbing others, yes. because you are serving God. A woman once blocked my, my on New Year's Eve, blocked my window, then I used to live in Shogule, and they brought some band, and they were singing praises. And I told the woman, I said, look, you are disturbing me. Say, I shouldn't allow the devil to use me. Yes, he <laughs> said you are fighting God. I'm fighting God. <laughs> that is you know? the point. Any little thing, God. God, like, as if... Yeah. You know, Napoleon Bonaparte, Napoleon Bonaparte once said I think Ekbolaho is uh, trying to... Yeah, there is a case of a 13-year-old uh, that has been sentenced to 10 years imprisonment for blasphemy. Yeah. And that is on the altar of a religious based law. Yeah. And I'm asking myself, I have a 13 year old too. What can I really hold a 13 year old responsible for? Yeah. And should I have to destroy him because I'm fighting on behalf of God or on behalf of one of his prophets? Mm. Um, it, it, it should send a message to our hearts as we do this, our religious stuff. In, in China, where they don't even do God matter, um, they live up to 77 years. 77 years is the life expectancy <laughs> in China. In Nigeria, it is 54. 
We need to start thinking right so that we are not fighting God's fight. God did not ask us to go and fight for it on his behalf. He can fight his own battle. That, that, that's my take on the stuff. Well, uh, well, how you have said it, uh, if the truth of religious doctrines is dependent on an inner experience that bears witnesses to the truth, what is one to make of the many people who do not have that experience? I'm up next after the break.